Why don't we use our bags? Now, I thought this was such an interesting one because I actually saw on Hello Catwalk's channel that she made a video that really spoke to me because, you know, a lot of times we purchase things, we get so into buying and, and making sure we're getting something on our wish list or whatever it may be, but then once we get it, we barely use that item and then we're just on to the next item and it's just like this vicious cycle. So I thought it'd be interesting to kind of, you know, use that as like my inspiration and do a spin off of that because I found this topic to be really interesting. Before we dive in, as always, thank you so much for stopping by. My name's Jenny and I love fashion, handbags, accessories, designer, everything and anything related. Now on this channel, you guys know I do reviews, unboxing, comparisons, anything along those lines. And most importantly, I just want to share my thoughts with you and also hear what you guys think. So if that's something that you love and enjoy as much as I do, please consider subscribing. And if you're not following me on Instagram, please check me out. Again, I just love posting about all the things that make my heart sing and I would love to chat with you guys if you guys ever have any questions on anything I've shared on the channel or just want to share purchases that you picked up or have any questions related. So going into this little topic on why is it that we never use some of our bags? Now, I can't say that this is true across the board for everyone, but this is my perception of it. Um, and I think a lot of it stems around these five things I'm going to share. So number one, and this one I think is one that maybe half of you will agree with is the new factor. So when you pick up something new and it's super shiny, you just don't know if you want to like break it in right away because you don't want to, you know, you want it to be as new as long as possible. It's almost like buying a new car, right? You love that new car smell. You know that if you drive the car, use the car a lot, it, that's eventually going to go away and that new feeling is going to go away. So sometimes you preserve it in the beginning, but then I think once you break the ice, then it's easier to actually use that car and drive that car. I feel the same way sometimes about bags. As you guys can see, this one was picked up, I think beginning of the year and I didn't use it till probably a couple weeks ago. I don't know. I just like had it in the box for a while. And that's just because it was new, it was shiny. You know, I didn't want to take it out. I just felt like it was safer in the box. <laughs> so this is it right here, you guys. If you guys haven't seen my review on this or first impressions, I will drop it below. But yeah, this is one that, you know, I felt like that initially because I just felt like, you know what? I want to keep it as new as possible. And I just, I want that like feeling to stay. So that's factor number one. That's kind of my point of view on it. Number two is fear of safety. A lot of times we don't want to wear a certain type of bag because we feel like we don't want to be that obvious where people will want to target or maybe steal from you or anything along that lines. And this goes along the lines of safety. And it, that is a universal thing for me. It doesn't matter what city you're in. It doesn't matter what area, location. It's all the same. We just all need to be alert and all of us in general. Um, and you can be going to the shopping mall, you can go into the post office, the grocery store, running errands, whatever it is, you know, just pay attention. Don't go be on your phone where you're not noticing if something is happening. Um, you just don't want to walk into a dangerous situation. You always want to know. But yeah, I do, I do think that could be a fear that that's why we don't use our bags depending on what we're trying to do. A lot of times when I travel, I know a lot of people love to use um, like bring their, you know, special bags out, whether it's a Kelly or, or a classic flap, whatever it may be, because they, they want it to be with them when they're traveling. They want that experience with those bags and make those memories with those bags. They want to take photos with those bags. Um, but for me, I want to do those things too. But my fear is bring it on vacation, either, you know, losing it or maybe, um, someone will take it. I don't know, whatever it is. That's kind of sometimes I'll think about those things. So in the end of the day, I end up bringing bags that I don't really care if they get ruined or don't really care if anything happens to them, but I'm very hesitant to bring the bags that I love so much. So 
I don't know. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that perception because I think, you know, we want to enjoy the bags. But again, awareness is really important. And again, it factors around safety. You don't want anything to draw attention to you where it could be a safety issue. So that is number two. Number three is price. So price goes back to many things, right? If you buy a bag that you would consider not as expensive, you're probably more inclined to use it because you don't care about it as much because you can always replace it, worst case scenario. So when you are going, let's say, to an amusement park, you may not want to bring your Chanel backpack out. I mean, you may, some people probably do, but like for me, I wouldn't. I don't even have a Chanel backpack, but I'm just giving an example. I wouldn't want to bring those things out. For me, I would bring like my lawn shop because it's also a great bag. And I'm not saying it's necessarily, I mean, it's less expensive than you would find a Chanel bag, but it's just as good and it's durable. It's water resistant and you can throw things in there, snacks, water bottles, wherever it may be. And it will still probably be really easy to wipe down. So I would be more inclined to use something like that. And I know it's not as expensive. So if something happens, it's something that is replaceable. But if I were to bring out something like an Hermes Birkin, which I wouldn't, but I don't even again have one. But if I did, I wouldn't bring that out because that's something that I personally couldn't replace. Um, and it will hurt a lot more than if it were my long shop. So I would say that is part of the price difference. So I think a lot of people are more inclined to use their bags that are more on the contemporary side or just something that's less expensive versus something that they feel like they save a lot for, they put a lot of investment towards. It's something that they'll just want to use on special occasions. Number four is showing off. And I think it just depends on, you know, everybody's um, different point of view. But I know a lot of people will say, well, I don't want to wear that because I don't want people to think I'm showing off or I don't want people to think badly of me because I'm wearing a certain brand or I'm, I'm have monogram all over. So I get that um, being flashy, right? So often when I go out, sometimes I don't want to be that flashy. So that's why sometimes I like things that are more minimal, like Celine bags. Celine is a very minimal bag. And if you know, you know, Loewe puzzle bag. Also one of those bags, if you know, you know, if you have a bag like monogrammed or, you know, something that's similar to like this Fendi baguette or a Louis Vuitton monogram, some people just don't want to like have that like so in your face. Now with me, I actually don't really mind that much. I think it just depends. I don't want to be overload, but if I'm wearing something as casual as this with my baguette, I think it's fine. I don't see it as being too much in my personal opinion, but I can see how some people just like the minimal look. Um, I think because I'm not so much of a minimalist as I am someone that likes to do a mix of minimal and um I don't know what the right word is edgy I guess so I don't mind but yeah so like some people will say I would definitely never get this baguette in the Zuka print I would prefer the Napa leather because it's it's a little bit more minimal it's a little bit more classic and I get it because honestly I like both <laughs> but yeah so I will say that would be another one factor that people may not be inclined to use a certain type of bag. Another thing I wanted to point out is work too. A lot of times people don't want to wear their nice bags to work. Now, some people do, some people don't, but they don't want to give that impression that they just have all these bags that they're kind of throwing their money at. I mean, it's just, again, it's, it goes back to impressions and what people think and all of that. So me personally, when it comes to work, I like using minimal bags. I don't necessarily, I mean, on occasions if we're doing like a special thing, I might use, you know, what I would consider a little bit more out there. But for me, like I like minimal bags and I like totes and things that I can stuff a lot of things in. Um, that's just what I prefer, especially if I'm going on a work or business trip and I need to like stuff something under the airplane seats. I don't necessarily want to use a bag that I love more. I would just rather use something that is less, more minimal. 
and not branded. So that's just how I feel. But again, like everyone is a little different, but I did want to mention that. And then number five is does the bag match? Now I know I personally believe you don't wear things to match the bag. The mat, the bag should just match whatever it is you're wearing. And I'm a big believer of mixing and matching. Like you, I all the time will go out in leggings and workout clothes, but wearing it with, you know, a Chanel or a Fendi, I don't think it, like I would totally wear this with a workout outfit. I don't think it matters. I don't think you need a dress up necessarily. So the bag fits in with your overall look. I just think it depends, but yeah, like who cares if it doesn't match? Because the point is to utilize our bags. And I actually think it's trendy to have a mix of casual versus fancy and not everything just looking so proper and perfect. Um, I'm definitely not that type of person. So I think it's great to mix and match. And I know that is a factor for a lot of people because they'll say, I can't wear that bag because I'm not dressed appropriately. I'm not wearing something nice to wear the Chanel classic flap. I need to make sure I'm wearing a dress or a suit in order to fit the bag. Now, that is definitely not something I believe in. Another thing I actually forgot to mention, and I just want to um, this little clip in is the fact that we're just the, for the obvious reasons we don't want to ruin our bags, right? Like the more you use it, the more wear you're going to get. And with that, you're just like, well, I paid so much. I don't want to, you know, let the, for example, on the baguette, the threads to come apart, or I don't want the lambskin to scratch like the trendy CC. I don't want, like, I wanted that bag for so long, but I refuse to buy it because of the lambskin. I'm just afraid that, you know, my nails will scratch the lambskin or anything along those lines. And those are all valid because I think we all kind of have that underlying fear when it comes to luxury bags at times. But the key is to get over those fears because what's the point of spending that money if you're literally not going to be able to actually use your bags? It's not, it doesn't matter what it looks like on the shelf or in your closet, you can't use it. So you know what? I've learned where tells a story. So if you get a scratch, it's a experience within that bag. If you, you know, get the leather to lift. I mean, most of the times when you pay for luxury, you can actually take these bags into the boutiques and they'll fix it. If it's like a, you know, whether you have to pay something because it's a wear and tear, or if it's a manufacturing thing, they'll obviously fix it for free. So with that kind of in the back of your mind, I think it kind of eases that feeling of being able to actually use your bag. So I don't know. I did wanted to make sure I threw this in because I thought it was so important. Um, and that's something I would say number one, that the reasons why I don't use some bags is that fear of, I, I don't want to create wear on it, but that's so silly. And I just wanted to throw that out there. Hopefully that helped you guys. If you guys are not using a certain bag, use your bag. Overall, I just want to conclude this by saying that I think this year, a lot of things I will pick up will be on the pre-love market. Like I love Fashion File. I tell you guys this all the time because for some reason, I just feel like it's already it has a story and it's been worn. So I'm more, I feel like I'm more comfortable wearing it and not having that to worry about it because it already has wear on it and it's okay. And I didn't pay as much for it. So I'm a believer in pre-love, which I never was until I would say a couple years back, but that's the way to go. And another reason for that is if you are trying to sell your bag in the future, like even if you buy a bag that is not worth the investment necessary, like I'll give an example, like a Loewe bag. Now, if you buy a Loewe bag for 2800 the chances are if you want to sell it a couple years or a year down the line, you're not going to get that 2800 back because someone can just go purchase that at any department store. So, but if you buy the bag pre-love, let's say for $2,000 and save that $800, you could maybe sell it for close to what you purchased it for. So that's just my two cents. It's not the same across every single brand necessarily. And sometimes it's based on seasons. And a lot of times like I sometimes will pay a little bit more on Fashion File because I'm looking for a certain bag that's no longer in season or maybe the color is no longer in season. So obviously like that bag might be worth a little bit more later. But again, you guys, I always tell you, I don't buy things for investment. I buy things that I love that I know I'm going to use. At least that's the intention. 
So that is pretty much it. That concludes this video. I hope you guys liked it. I know it's a little different than what we normally do. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up and I will see you in my next one. Bye.